Hi, this is Joel again with another movie review. And then continue my theme with talking about old horror films, particularly universal films. I'm going to be discussing the 1933 film, The Invisible Man. It was directed by James Well. This is follow up for directing uh, Frankenstein. And so is, of course, Corn Maids and Gloria Stewart. Yes, for those of you who, don't, who are big fans of Titanic, yes, it's that Gloria Stewart who played old roles in that's going to be from Titanic. So if you see what she looks like as a young young woman, you could you could watch uh, Invisible Man. Well, Invisible Man came, was based on the, the book by H. G. Wells, of the same name, and it stars Claude May. And the reason why Claude originally was Bella Lugosi, I think it was Bella Lugosi or uh, more actually was Boris Karloff was actually hired or originally hired to play. Man, who originally selected him to play him. But the problem was that he was having a contract dispute with Universal Studios. So he so he was yanked or pulled off the uh, movie and they hired uh, James Rowe hired the guy who he wanted to hire originally and that was Claude Mays. The reason why Claude Mays was hired is because he had the you know the big voice. And not not like Boris Karloff didn't have a great speaking voice. He he did. But he, like I said, like you just said, he had a contract dispute with Universal Studios. So Claude Mains was available, and he had a great voice because you have to have, for the play the Invisible Man, you have to have a great speaking voice because all you hear is the voice. Uh, very few times in the movie they actually see Claude Mains uh, have his head wrapped up like a mummy and wear a bathrobe and, or, well, when you first see him, he does wear a suit and an overcoat and a hat with sunglasses. Uh, and then, of course, he unwraps his bandages on his head and you see he's invisible. Uh, so, but, uh, so, so, that, so you need, you need the voice because he's going to be mostly invisible except for those times when he has, when the bathroom and he has bandages on his face. Uh, other than those scenes, and of course at the very end, we actually do see what, what he look, actually looks like. Uh, most of the time, we you don't even see him, you just hear the voice. Or unless something is covering him, to make give you the illusion that, that yes, he's invisible, and you can tell that it's supposed to be invisible in those scenes. But of course, this movie is more, I guess you can see more campy. Well, they upped up the humor in this in this thing because the acting. Uh, I think, as you can see, this is the first real horror film where you have a lot of campy acting uh, and deadpan delivery of some of the dialogue because you have uh, sometimes you have some cops where you have such, such a straight blank face, blank expressions, and then they, they said, Oh, okay, and there's this one particular fat cop, fat than I am. He says, Oh, okay, very good. Yeah, and turn the turn the plan. Maybe he, maybe if we catch him asleep, he has to sleep. You know, he and, and then deliver these types of lines, and kind of camps up the humor. And, and another thing that drove me crazy, and, and drives a lot of people crazy, is the performance of Una O'Connor, who plays the innkeeper's wife, and all she does is. Screams and screams and screams and screams and You know, screams like that when her husband gets attacked, and and then and then she he's homicidal. You know, he's so, so screaming that, and then and then she starts screaming, he's homicidal. You know, you know, and and, and the way she screams, and, and unfortunately she you find it's almost the same kind of a role in the Bride of Frankenstein. She's in that movie as well. As well as the cop, in the, the, the guy who plays the cop, he also plays the burgomaster, also playing Frankenstein. Uh, who also delivers his dialogue pretty uh, bland and, and kind of can't be waiting to deliver his dialogue. So that's also what's kind of annoying. But but the best part of this film is, of course, the special, special effects, which of course, 1933. You, obviously there was no computers then and there was no CG obviously no CGI to fall back on. So 
So the special effects at that time were, were, were terrific. Absolutely terrific. And it was something that's kind of more fun to watch. A movie like that because it does have a lot of uh, humor in it. Uh, not over the top humor, but definitely um, in the campy factor, it has an over the top campiness factor in this in this particular film. It's kind of a little more not on that uh, scary of a thing, uh, or scary of a film, because of the over the top campiness in this in this movie and the way some of the dialogue has, has been delivered. But in terms of the performance of Tim uh, Claude Mains, it's terrific. And of course, Claude Mains, like for years, performed and, and performed in so many other movies, like he was in Casablanca, he was in another horror from The Wolfman, which of course is, you know, if we we're talking about great horror, great horror films, is that one, which are, if we will ever get to it, I'll, I'll get to it. But uh, those movies, with the Invisible Man, I think it's you know it's quite good. Uh, you know, H.G. Wells was still alive at the time that the movie came out. When the movie was made, it came out. He didn't like the fact there was one particular. Uh, there was not all that many changes with the novel, original novel, and the movie. There was only one change though: that the drug that made uh, the Invisible Man invisible. Um, which was his name uh, Mono King in the film. Uh, the main invisible, the main, the core main character, or Jack Griffin, was the character, was the character's name. Uh, invisible, uh, made him mad. He was driven by madness, in, in, you know, in the film. Because he figured he realizes, you know, more, the longer he's staying invisible, the more he realizes that, hey, I can do all this stuff, I could, Rob people, I could kill people, I could rape people, I could rape women, and you know, I could do all, all this stuff, and no one, well, no one would believe that the that Invisible Man could do all this stuff. And, and if I could pass along this drug, I could make invisible armies, and we could invade the world, and you know, people, people won't, won't, see, won't see us coming, and we, we can attack people, and all this type of, and invade countries. You know, of course, eventually in the end of the film, he, he does get shot and killed by the cops. The cops are small on him, and he, he gets shot by the cops at the end of the film, and of course he dies. And when he does die, that's when the effects of the drugs uh, that made him invisible wear off, or, or, or end up wearing off, and you do see his face, face in the, in the very, very end of the film. The last scene in the film is when he dies, you see his face. Uh, but, but as a film itself, I think it's good. I mean, the only one that actually gave a real serious performance in this film that wasn't really over the top was Gloria Stewart, who plays Jack Griffin's uh, girlfriend and the daughter of one of the other scientists in this film. Um, she's about the only one who doesn't really give an over, really an over the top performance. Um, the other one, possibly, was the other assistant scientist in this film, uh, Kemp. Uh, I'm not sure who, I don't remember the actor's name who plays the part, but uh, at first he didn't really give an over the top performance, he gets more and more scared of the invisible man. Uh, he, he gets more and more scared of what he's going to do, what he's capable of, and that, and that type of stuff. Uh, but in terms of and then of course he gets overly scared and then, and then of course one point where he double crosses Jack Griffin and said Jack Griffin is the invisible man and then when uh, Jack Griffin threatens to kill Kemp he goes nuts Kemp goes crazy he says he's gonna kill me at 10 o'clock why don't you do something protect me put me in jail cell protect me and, and, he, and he, he goes nuts. I mean, eventually everybody gives an over the top performance. Uh, like I said, I think the only other one on the Glowing Stool that doesn't give an over the top performance was was the guy who played Glowing Stool's father. He doesn't, he doesn't give an over the top performance. Everyone else here does, and the camp factor is uh, up totally. I'm sure the Invisible Man was made today, 2014, 1723. Uh, I don't think we'll get great, great, great 
Rhinos because of the campiness. It's so campy and so many over the top components. It's better by Uma Okada, like I mentioned earlier. So I have to say it's one of the worst actresses I've ever seen in a horror film. Uh, she is terrible. I don't know why in the hell she even had a job a job acting in not only one film but two films that I am aware of. And she is just horrible. I mean she is god awful. And all, all, all I'm gonna say is if you wanna see an, an awful performance, look at uh, Una Okana, not only much Invisible Man, but also in Flying Frankenstein. She is just gives the same performance. I think she was uh, the same outfits too. I mean, with, with the scary thing. She is just terrible. She is terrible. Uh, the only people that are worse than her, I mean, the people who are in that uh, in that Jack Vivian walks into in the beginning of the film, and th those characters are just also over the top campy characters as well. Uh, but 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 even despite the campiness, I feel this it is an enjoyable movie. You can watch it and get a few cheap laughs. But it, it is an entertaining horror film, and it's not that scary. Uh, unlike other movies and horror films at the time, which was scary as anything, like the movie you just did with Frankenstein. Uh, Dracula, which I'm hopefully planning to do, some, maybe hopefully before Halloween comes, to, to, to do that film. Uh, so that's my review of The Invisible Man. Another, actually a short film review this time. Please uh, click on the review, please rate it, feel free to comment on it, please subscribe to my channel, and please forward this or link this video onto your Facebook pages. Thanks for watching, you can't the next time, and hopefully when we do another horror movie review, and please check out my other videos. I really appreciate if you watch some of my, some of my older videos, because I need the, view, need, need, need the views. Thanks for watching, and catch you next time.